So we went out foraging yesterday and came back with some lovely big oyster mushrooms. Now it was pouring with rain so these are actually quite a bit damp. They'll need a little wipe over but other than that they're really clean. So we're going to wipe those over and I'm going to try to make today a kind of a pie with mushrooms, cashews, onions and potatoes. The cashew nuts, well here's the pack of cashew nuts, look at the image there on the, uh, on the packet. Roasted and salted cashews but have a look at what they're like inside the packet. These were the cheapest cashews I could find and so I've only got myself to blame for this. They're more like smashed up cashews. But for what we're going to do today, that's absolutely perfect because I'm going to use these to make a kind of sauce or gravy for the inside of the pie. So the very first thing to do is to take these cashews and they've got some salt with them, which is fine. So we're going to use that for the seasoning. So the first thing to do anyway is going to be to blend these up with a little bit of water. It's about 40 grams of cashews and the salt from the bottom of a packet. Probably about 75 ml of water. I'll probably only add half of that to start with. And then with a hand blender, we're going to blend these up. Pretty good. A bit more water just to wash the top of the blender off there. So what we ended up with is a kind of creamy looking liquid. Let's have a little taste. Hmm, interesting. Tastes kind of halfway between peanut butter and, oddly, breakfast cereal, but quite salty as well, because that was the bottom of the packet of cashews, and it has all the salt that gathered at the bottom of the packet. So we won't need very much additional seasoning in this recipe. A couple of medium-sized onions there and a clove of garlic, and I'm just going to dice this to smallish pieces. So I've got about three tablespoons of oil in that pan, which might seem like quite a lot, but we're going to use that with some flour later to make a sauce that thickens. I'm just going to wait till that starts to sizzle, but we mustn't brown it. If you brown garlic, it goes bitter, so we're just going to let that start to sizzle. And now to stop that burning, the onion is going to go in as well, and that will kind of mitigate the heat of that oil a bit, and that will stop the garlic from burning. Okay, I'm going to turn that down a little bit and just let that sizzle away while we prepare the mushrooms. Okay, now for some people, washing mushrooms seems to be essential. For me, and especially when they're really clean like this, I pick these off a tree away from ground level in the forest. It was raining already, so they've actually kind of had a natural wash. In fact, they've, they're quite... They're quite wet already. They've soaked up a bit of water. And that's why I don't like to wash them, because under normal circumstances, wild mushrooms will tend to soak up a fair old bit of water, and that can just interfere with the cooking process and also make them a bit unpleasant to handle. These are not too bad, but they are a little bit, I would say, waterlogged. Anyway, just going to give them a wipe over with some kitchen paper towel. But, you know, if you want to wash them, then knock yourself out. Now oyster mushrooms we can just tear them into pieces like this but that will make long fairly long strips so I think probably what I'm going to do here is cut those as well to make kind of chunks. We'll try and go for the same size pieces. These onions now are nicely softened but haven't caramelized at all. If I wanted to, we could take this so that we caramelise the onions a little bit. That might actually happen anyway while we're frying the mushrooms off. But we're going to just see how it goes. So the mushrooms which I tore up into pieces, I'll just put those mushrooms in now. Now that might look like quite a lot for this pan, but these mushrooms are quite moist and will cook down. If you're using oyster mushrooms that you bought in a store, you probably find they don't have such a high moisture content as this. I forage these in the rain, so they are actually quite wet. And we'll see in a minute, loads of juice will come out of these. Well, water. But anyway, 
that will cook down a fair bit. I'm going to put in a pinch of mixed herbs, which is a mixture of thyme, marjoram, oregano, parsley, sage and basil. Now as we cook these mushrooms you can actually see the moisture bubbling out of them now. See all of that liquid. That's mostly water. Some of it is the natural juice of the mushrooms and of course the onions as well. Anyway, we're going to cook this until it stops boiling and starts frying again. So if you listen very closely to what's going on in the pan at the moment, it's like a bubbling sound. We'll contrast that with the frying sound we hear in a minute. So we've been simmering this away for about probably 10 minutes and the sound I'm now hearing is starting to turn into a frying sound. It's just a slightly harsher, more sizzly sort of noise. And you can see that when I squeeze them, I'm not getting so much liquid out of these mushrooms now. There's still a bit to drive off, but we are getting to the point now where we're frying again rather than boiling. And when cooking mushrooms, that's actually quite a good place to get to because that means the mushrooms aren't going to exude any more water and water down the sauce that you make. It means also they're in a fit state to start absorbing flavours as well. I'm just going to put a tablespoon of white flour in there. You could use wholemeal. And I'm just going to stir that in and coat these pieces of mushrooms a little bit with the flour. I'll just let that cook a little bit before we add some liquid. I'm just going to turn my oven on to 180 degrees fan heating just to preheat. Okay and I think we're ready to start adding some liquid to this now. So we got this cashew mixture that we made here. I'm just going to reserve a tiny bit of the top of that and then the rest of it's going to go in here. I'm just going to give that a little mix before we turn the heat back up. We'll see how it goes once it's heated up. It might need a little bit more water than that. So we're just going to go with small amounts of water. Good. I think that's about the right consistency there. So that's fully up to the simmer now. Not going to thicken any further apart from when moisture leaves it in the oven. But we've got a nice oozy sort of texture there. And we'll give that a little taste just for seasoning level. Now that's interesting. I thought that was going to be enough salt from those salted cashews. But it does need a little more. And I think that will be nice with a little grind of nutmeg. And a bit of black pepper. When I say a bit, I mean quite a bit. Okay, taste again. Yep, that's it. So, turn the heat off now, and then I'm just going to make sure that the edges of the pan are not coated in sauce, because that will just burn. I'm just going to slice up some potatoes now and layer them on the top. I've left the skins on because they're quite nice, although there's a bit there we can lose. So I'm just going to try and slice these potatoes really as thin as I can. If you've got a mandolin that would obviously be useful, you know, because musical accompaniment is great. Um, and it doesn't matter too much about the shape. We could go for something that looks really pretty and organised on top, but I'm not going to bother with that today because we're just making a quick lunch and then the pieces of potato I'm just going to layer them on here the idea here is to try to create space in between the pieces so just laying them on top it doesn't need to be neat although you can if you want but what I'm trying to do here is to overlap them in such a way that creates spaces between them because they'll cook more evenly that way
Okay, well, I didn't quite intend to be that neat and tidy, but, you know, that's fine. And this will tend to bubble up a little bit at the edges, so what I'm going to do now is, with some of the remaining potato, is just chop it into smallish pieces, and we'll just scatter a little border of diced potato around the edge, just to be there when that sauce bubbles up from the edges. Okay, and then that little bit of cashew mixture that we had left, I'm just going to paint it on the top here and see what happens. Hopefully that will help it to go a little bit golden, but we shall see. So that's going to go into the oven on 180 degrees centigrade for about 25 minutes. Okay, so there it is. I've just given that a couple of minutes under the grill just to sizzle up those potatoes and give them some little crispy edges. That's very, very hot now. So I'm just gonna let that rest for a bit while we cook some peas to go with it and then we'll give it a taste. Okay, just me for lunch today because Jenny's out running an errand she needs to do. So let's serve up. portion of this stuff. Okay, well, so the sauce underneath has gone very silky and thick. So there it is. I'm actually pretty pleased with that. Let's give it a taste. Hmm. A little touch more black pepper, a tiny bit of salt. That potato's just gone tender without going too mushy. So that was a bit of an experiment, but I'm really pleased with that. That sauce has gone so silky and rich. Mmm, really good. I think this would also be good as a, a larger dish with maybe some white beans thrown in there, some cooked white beans like cannellini or butter beans mixed in just before putting the top on the pie. That's super, really good. Hmm. Yeah, that was really good. I'm actually really pleased with that. So that's my oyster mushroom, onion and cashew nut bake. I suppose I called it a pie because it's shaped like a pie potatoes on top so maybe it's more like a hot pot so lots of different ways you could adapt this recipe but i actually liked it just like that nice and simple really tasty and very satisfying thanks for watching and i hope to see you again soon